Okay, let's wait maybe a minute for people to log in, um, log on YouTube. I just posted the link. All right, sounds good. Hello, everyone. That's logging in right now. Okay, I think we're good to go. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to our 2021 Solar Eclipse chat and trivia event. I hope you're all excited uh, for Thursday's eclipse. Uh, if you're not prepared, that's okay. Nick is here to help us out. So he'll be giving a short talk, uh, telling us tips on how to safely observe the eclipse. And then for anyone who wants to participate, we'll have a short round of trivia with some prizes. So stay tuned. Uh, but for now, Nick, take it away. All right, thanks, Simon. So I'm just gonna go ahead and share my screen. Um, all right, hi everyone. Um, so as Simon said, my name is Nick Vieira and I'm a master's student at the McGill Space Institute. Uh, and today I wanna have a really quick chat about how to observe this upcoming uh, really exciting solar eclipse. And so if you have any questions during the talk, feel free to send them in on YouTube or Zoom, uh, wherever you're watching from. And I'm gonna pause at a few points and then also at the end to see if anyone has any questions. Um, so first of all, uh, what even is a solar eclipse? And specifically, what is an annular solar eclipse, um, like the one that we're going to be seeing later this week? And so, well, as this really simple graphic shows, and this graphic's not to scale, uh, a solar eclipse occurs when the moon passes uh, right in front of the sun, casting a shadow on the Earth. That's it. Um, and in the case of an annular eclipse, we are specifically in a part of the moon's shadow called the Antumbra. Um, if you're just a little outside of that part of the shadow in a region called the penumbra, um, you'll see a partial eclipse. And we call it partial because from that point of view, not all of the sun is covered. Um, seeing this in a different way, here is a graphic uh, showing how the shadow of the moon is going to travel over the surface of the Earth on the morning of June 10th. And so anyone in this dark red region will see what's called an annular eclipse, um, while folks in the lighter regions will see a partial eclipse. Um, and you can actually visit that site, timeanddate.com, at the bottom there uh, to play around with this globe for yourself. And so now zooming in on Canada, um, this is what the uh, eclipse is going to look at um, in different parts of the country. Uh, so the time given at each of these locations is the local time in that part of the country when the moon is going to cover the largest part of the sun. And if you find Montreal on this map, you can see right away that we're pretty lucky, actually. Um, the eclipse is going to, at maximum, cover about 80% of the sun uh, at about 5.39 in the morning. And so what we're going to see is something like this really beautiful ring, or maybe more of a croissant, um, made out of fire. Uh, and so this is a photo taken from Texas, from a town which is coincidentally called Sundown, um, during a partial eclipse in 2012. Uh, and it looks absolutely gorgeous, and so we're all really, really excited about this. Um, so now I'm going to sort of change gears. Uh, and talk a bit about some uh, how it's going to look specifically for Montreal. So um, in Montreal, uh, by the time the sun has risen, um, the eclipse will have already started. Uh, so at about five minutes after sunrise, 5.15 in the morning, this is what the eclipse will look like. The moon will have started to pass in front of the sun, and so it will have started taking this little bite out of the sun in the top uh, right corner over there. Very shortly thereafter, um, we're going to quickly approach the maximum of the eclipse at exactly 5.39 a.m. in 10 seconds, uh, where almost 80% of the sun is going to be eclipsed. And so all that's going to be left is this really, really thin uh, little ring 
very much like in that photo that I showed you from Texas earlier, uh, earlier just now. Um, and so if you're going to watch any part of the eclipse, you should watch the whole thing. But if you're going to watch any part of the eclipse, this is the part that you really, really won't want to miss. Um, not long after, at around 6 a.m., uh, we see that the sun is starting to peek out from behind the moon as the moon, uh, well, as the Earth continues to rotate. And so the moon uh, changes where it is. Um, and then not long after that, just about 40 minutes later, the show will be over. Um, but as you can see, this gives us a nice window of about an hour and a half to observe this thing. Um, you know, get comfy, make your coffee, uh, and, and, you know, observe this really beautiful event. And so before I move on to some more tips for safely observing this thing, uh, are there any questions in the chat that you want to uh, share, Simon? Any questions that anyone has? Not yet, you can uh, keep going, but if anyone has any questions, feel free to ask in the Zoom chat or YouTube chat. Okay, great. Yeah, no, any questions at all, I'm happy to answer. Uh, but okay, so if no questions then, um, now let's talk about how you can safely observe the eclipse. And the, the word safely is bolded and in blue letters uh, because it's an important part of observing an eclipse. So the first thing that I'm going to tell you uh, is what not to do, okay? And so what you never want to do is to observe a solar eclipse or the sun in general uh, directly with your eyes. Um, you should also not do this with any sort of optical instruments like binoculars or a telescope unless they have the appropriate filters. Um, if you've ever played with a magnifying glass as a kid uh, and see that you can, you know, like light grass on fire with a magnifying glass aimed at the right part of the sun, uh, you probably don't want to do that to your eyes. Um, doing so can cause permanent eye damage. Uh, and so if you try and look at the eclipse directly, uh, this probably will be the last solar eclipse that you ever really appreciate. Um, and so in some do not look at this thing directly. What you can do is use specially designed eclipse glasses to look at the eclipse. Um, and these glasses filter out all of the harmful light, making sure that you don't damage your eyes. Um, note, however, that these are not the same thing as sunglasses. Um, and sunglasses will not protect you if you look directly at the sun for extended periods of time. If you do have a pair of these, we highly recommend that you check out this list from the American Astronomical Society, uh, which includes a bunch of trustworthy eclipse glasses manufacturers. Um, so you can see uh, the American Astronomical Society has tested glasses from all of these eclipse glasses makers um, to check that they're safe. Um, if you're not sure if your glasses are on the list, you can contact whoever sold them to you, whether you bought them in person at a store or on Amazon or whatever, um, and they should be able to tell you where the eclipse glasses were made. Um, however, you actually don't need uh, glasses to see the eclipse. Um, in fact, if you can make a pinhole, which is really just a small hole in something, uh, you can then project the eclipse onto a piece of paper or cardboard, like you can see in some of these images here. Uh, and this is a lot of fun, actually, because you can get pretty creative with this. Uh, here you can see Simon uh, using the Astro McGill logo uh, as a pinhole. And so you can see tiny little dots projected on that piece of cardboard on the ground. Um, and then in the middle, you can see someone using a spatula that they got from their kitchen. So, you know, something you probably have in your kitchen, uh, which has holes in it, uh, to also see the eclipse on a piece of paper. And then another thing that you can find in your kitchen, a, a pasta colander, so the thing you use to strain pasta, um, is also really great for observing the eclipse. Um, and so you do not need glasses to see this thing. If you can make a hole in a piece of paper or a piece of cardboard and project that onto another piece of paper, you're set. Um, and on that note, we actually encourage you to participate in what our friends at Discover the Universe are calling uh, their Eclipse Challenge. Um, and so if you construct a pinhole camera or whatever setup you use to observe the eclipse safely, um, please share it with us. We'd love to see it. Uh, and use the hashtag Defi Eclipse Challenge um, so that we can all see them afterwards. Um, and you can visit their website for more information. Um, so I'm going to wrap up with a few general tips. Um, and these are true for folks in Montreal, but also, you know, almost anywhere in Canada, just because of how eclipse or how early this thing uh, is going to be in the morning. Um, and so the eclipse is going to be very close to the horizon. Uh, and so you're going to want to make sure that where you're looking from, you are somewhere that is high up, uh, but safe. Please don't like climb any buildings, you know, high up, but safe. Um, 
that has a clear unblocked view to the east. So you don't want to have any trees or anything like that in the way. Um, and this way, you'll be able to see the eclipse really from start to finish as it climbs slowly above the horizon as the sun rises. Um, another tip, just to reiterate, never look at an eclipse with your unprotected eyes. Uh, we already said this earlier, but it bears repeating. Um, it will be the last eclipse you ever see. And also, um, this is something that a lot of folks ask about. Um, if you can use your cell phone to look at the eclipse. Um, and the answer is unfortunately no. Uh, doing so can damage your cell phone's camera. Um, and it's going to take a pretty blurry, not so great image anyways. So, you know, not a huge loss. Uh, so what you're going to want to do is really to use a pinhole camera that you can make with, you know, whatever you've got around the kitchen. Um, so for some more resources, there's tons of them online. Uh, there's no shortage of resources, but some, uh, some that I've highlighted here. Uh, Plateau Astro has shared a blog post with Montreal-specific tips, including um, where you can see the eclipse. So if you're in Rosemont, this is where you can see the eclipse. If you're in the Plateau, this is where you can see the eclipse. Um, so that's a really nice resource for folks in Montreal. Um, Time and Date, as I mentioned earlier, has a lot of really beautiful animations showing uh, what the eclipse will look like and also the science behind the eclipse. Um, and a lot of them are interactive, so you can play with them. Discover the Universe, uh, as usual, has a lot of really nice resources for this as well. So again, information about you know, why eclipses happen and also how to observe this one. Um, Espace pour la vie, uh, so that's the, you know, the planetarium, um, also has a nice uh, list of, um, for folks who are not in Montreal, but in different parts of Quebec, uh, exactly when you're going to want to look at the eclipse. Um, and then also a few uh, places in Canada, so that's another nice resources. Um, and finally, Stellarium, uh, to get an idea of what the eclipse will look like. And so earlier on, when I showed, uh, you know, the progression of the eclipse over time, uh, that was made with Stellarium. Uh, and that web app is, it's pretty intuitive, pretty easy to use. And so you can actually see what the eclipse will look like um, from your location. Um, and with that, that's all that I have. And so um, I'll now take questions, uh, any questions at all, about the science behind it or about how to observe the eclipse. Thanks, Nick. Uh, we do have a few questions. Uh, some of them you've answered already about the cell phone thing, for example. I assume digital camera, same thing, right? Yes. Uh, yeah. yeah. And certainly don't uh, point at the sun with your digital camera. If you really want to use a camera, use your, your selfie camera and turn around, yeah. right? Yeah. Now, do you know if there are any uh, filters that can be used for these cameras so that they don't get damaged? And you know, that's a, a good question. Given the, the fact that there's some demand for this, I, I wouldn't be surprised if those exist online. Um, they certainly exist for things like uh, telescopes and binoculars. And that website uh, that I shared before from the American Astronomical Society um, includes not just reputable uh, eclipse glasses makers, but also makers of solar filters. So you can check out that website and it might actually have some uh, tips on where you could find something like that. Good question. Great. Uh, speaking of websites, can you send all of those links in the chat, uh, Zoom and YouTube, af after you're done? So that yes, can... sure. As, uh, as folks Great. are starting the trivia, I'll make sure to drop those in the chat. Perfect. I already sent the uh, Astro American Astronomical Society one. Cool. Um, someone heard it was safe to watch an eclipse through a CD. Not sure. Oh, what that's mean. interesting. So, I mean... If you're talking about like looking at the, the, the opaque part of the CD, I'm not sure. I, f I don't think that the sun would show through that. Um, what you might have heard is that it's safe to use the whole of the CD as a pinhole. Um, and, you know, that's that a great sense, idea. Yeah. If you have a CD somewhere yeah. around the house that you can, that would be a, a really easy thing to turn into a pinhole. But as for observing it through like the, the disc part or through the hole, definitely not. Yeah. You definitely shouldn't hold up the CD like that because... That's the same as just looking at it with your eyes. Um, and through the opaque part of the CD, uh, I don't think it would shine through. I think what they heard is probably as a pinhole, as an easy pinhole camera. Yeah, I'm sure that yeah. would work. That's perfect, actually. You, yeah. you could try that. Uh, yeah. Uh, well, someone asked uh, where we should watch from. So you did show the link uh, for anyone who's in Montreal, the Plateau Astro. Uh, maybe yeah. you can share that or I can too. Yeah, uh, you know what? I can um, I can stop sharing my screen and I can grab that and share it. Um, yeah, for if you're in Montreal, the Plateau Astro link is really really uh, nice and complete. 
Um, and so I'll, I'll grab that really quickly and share that in the Zoom chat. And then Simon, if you want to share it on YouTube, maybe. Oh, yeah. I see that someone has already sh shared it. OK, thank oh, awesome. you very much to the person who shared it. OK, other questions? Oh, well, maybe we can just share. Uh, I can share my screen showing the sure. West whole thing. Yeah, so that's a good for idea. anyone in Montreal, yeah, um, there are a few spots you can go to which are elevated enough and you want the horizon to be more or less clear, not have it too many buildings to the east. So if you're in the plateau, Jeanne Mans Park is perfect. Uh, the, this, um, this cartoon shows the actual position of where the eclipse will happen. Um, if you're if you're willing to to wake up early and uh, climb up uh, Mont Royal, you can go to the Belvedere. That's going to be a great spot. Uh, in Parc X, you can go to uh, Parc Jarry. That'll be good. Um, Parc Par Marquette in Rosemont. Uh, Parc Lafont in um, near the Olympic Stadium. Uh, Parc Frederic Back. That's a good one. It's very very open. Uh, that, that should be great. In Villeray, uh, in, in Sau Recollet, you can go to Parc des Hirondelles. That looks great too. <laughs> and that, that's all that there is. Uh, that, this is a great website. There's some other resources you can find here. So definitely a lot of places you, you can go to. Just make sure your view to the east is clear. Um, yeah, someone thanks. asked, is it possible in Saint-Basil? Yes, um, it, it's, it's possible anywhere near, near Montreal. Um, just find somewhere, find a park, um, if possible, elevated. Um, yeah. Yeah. So another uh, question. Uh, oh, go ahead, Nick. Yeah. So as, as Simon was saying, anywhere around Montreal and in Quebec in general, and half of Canada is a good place to observe it. Um, as to where, that's hard to know. It depends where you're at. Um, but this eclipse is happening Thursday morning, right? So uh, if you're willing, Go out tomorrow morning and see if you can see the sunrise clearly. Um, and if you can, then you're set. Um, but it's hard to know without, you know, being specifically where you're at right now. That's true. And then uh, someone asks, how, how exactly do you make the pinhole? Yeah. Um, and so, I mean, it's called a, a pinhole, right? Because you literally just need to take like a pin. It doesn't need to be a, a giant wall. Like take a, a pen or a pin or something like that. Um, and the easiest way to do it is to use a piece of cardboard to actually make the pin. Um, and then uh, just a blank sheet of paper, as you saw in those pictures that I showed before. Uh, in fact, maybe I'll, I'll share my screen, just you know, might as well see those again. Um, OK, and then, OK, so you should be seeing that. Yeah. Um, so you know, any sort of thick sheet of paper uh, with some pinholes in it, and then a light colored piece of paper, even a piece of cardboard like Small is using here, um, works really well. White paper works really well just because the contrast between the shadows and the light is very, very clear. Um, and so if you have a white sheet of paper around, I highly recommend that. Um, but yeah, just if you go through your recycling box and you find like a box of cereal, uh, you could, you know, rip that, make a pinhole in it, and that's perfect. So. Yeah, so... Um... Someone mentions it in the chat. So as for glasses, uh, we also heard about some places that distribute them, such as uh, library, that's in Montreal, libraries and the planetarium. Uh, we, can't we can't confirm that uh, for sure. I suggest if you really want glasses at, at last minute, you call them and um, maybe you can pick some up tomorrow or the morning of the eclipse. But when you get your eclipse, you want to make sure that they're certified. Okay, so that, that's, all, that's all we can tell you if you want to be safe. Uh, you can use the AAAS website and whatever eclipses you get, here are mine, okay. They should have a certification on the side somewhere here. Uh, that's on the website that we sent in the chat, okay? So only use uh, eclipse glasses that are certified. Otherwise, we they can't guarantee um, that they're safe. Okay. So uh, I'll see if there are any more questions. I don't think so. So thank you so much, Nick. Uh, now we're ready to 
do some trivia, anyone who wants to participate. Uh, here's how it's gonna work. I'm going to send a Google form with 10 uh, multiple choice questions. So you'll answer each of them. We'll give you 10 minutes. Okay, so about one minute per question. Um, at the top, you need to write down your email so that we can contact you uh, if you win. And uh, also write down your name. Uh, if you don't want your name to be said uh, right here on Zoom and on YouTube, you can put a fake name. That's okay. You can call yourself Albert Einstein or maybe something more original so that not everyone's called Albert Einstein or Isaac Newton. Um, is there a question? Okay. Um, so yeah, I'll send the, the form now in the Zoom chat and the YouTube chat. So for the trivia, no Googling allowed, of course, right? This is, this is for fun. Um, please, no Googling, please be honest. And our prizes, so our top two uh, uh, contestants will win a $25 gift card to a local library. Okay, so it's a good reason to participate and also to learn some things. Okay, so here is the Google form. You can all click on that. So you write down your email, your name, and then answer some trivia questions. We'll give you 10 minutes. In 10 minutes, you come back to Zoom or don't log off. And I'm gonna go through the answers while we calculate the points. Uh, if there are any questions regarding how this works, please write them down. Oh, I didn't send it directly. So to participate in the trivia, you just click on that link that I just sent, write down your email, your name or a fake name, that's okay too. And then just answer each of the questions and submit the form at the end.
Okay, so five more minutes for trivia. Five minutes. Okay, looks like most of you have answered the form and submitted it. So I hope you had fun. Uh, so Carolina will be calculating the points and figure out who won. For now, I will share the answers with you. Okay. Uh, Nick, quick confirmation that you can see this? Yep, yeah, looks great. Okay, and stop me if anyone has uh, questions in the chat. Okay, so first question. What is the minimum number of solar eclipses that happen on Earth every year? The answer is two. So there are at minimum two solar eclipses and two lunar eclipses, but sometimes it's three. It all depends on the... Um, timing in the lunar cycle with the Earth's rotation uh, around the sun. But the minimum is two. During which phase or phases of the moon can a solar eclipse happen? The answer is new moon. That's because a solar eclipse happens when the moon comes in front of the sun. And when that happens, there's no reflection of sunlight onto the moon that we can see. That, that's what a new moon is. And just a comment, some of you might be shocked here. Yes, quarter moon and half moon are the same thing. So when we see half of the moon, that's the actual name is quarter moon because it's a quarter way in its trajectory. I think it should be called half moon, but that's okay. Next question, when will the next total solar eclipse in Montreal happen? So the one this Thursday is an annular eclipse, but in 2024, which is the answer, 
we'll have a total solar eclipse. So the moon will totally block the sun here in Montreal. So you don't want to miss that. And you can be sure that us at Astro McGill uh, will organize some great event. So I hope you all look forward to that. What is the maximum size of the moon's umbra? So the moon's shadow during a solar eclipse? Maybe a tough one. The answer is 267 kilometers. So quite large, but not a, not a whole country either. Which physical description of nature was confirmed by eclipse observation? So some of these questions will help whoever came to our public, public lectures. That's the way it goes. So the answer, of course, is astrology. I'm just kidding. <laughs> the answer is Einstein's general relativity. So Einstein in the early 20th century uh, proposed that gravity was nothing but the curvature of space-time done by massive objects. And so he suggested that during an eclipse, you could actually see stars that aren't supposed to be there. Here's a diagram. So if there's, if there's a star here and the Earth is here, the sun is in the middle. Let me get a pointer, actually. Uh, there we go. Spotlight. Okay. So a star in the back here, the Earth is here. Because of general relativity, Einstein's theory for gravity, the sun actually bends space-time, so it bends light coming around. And so from Earth, it looks like the, the star is actually back here, but in reality, it's here. So if you can see the star, it means that um, indeed space-time is curved. And of course, you, you, you can't see this in normal times because the sun is way too bright. You won't see the star. But during an eclipse, you can't see the sun anymore, so you can see the background stars. Next question. So which part of the sun can easily be seen by eye? This white fluff here during an eclipse. The answer is the corona. So corona means crown. And that's what we can see here. It's a huge region that extends thousands of kilometers into space. And if you're curious, um, these other regions, the photosphere is what we see normally. Well, you, you're not supposed to look at the sun, right? But if you were this yellow ball, that's the photosphere. That's where the photons escape. The chromosphere is actually this red part here. It's very tiny. And it, it has this red taint because of specific emission lines in the, in the gas right at the edge of the sun. And the core is what's inside the sun. We never see that. So good job to anyone who got that. Which of these astronomical objects are often discovered using eclipses? Perhaps a trick question, but I, I saw that many of you got the right answer. It's exoplanets. So it's not an eclipse like a solar eclipse. I didn't write solar or lunar eclipse, right? It's uh, an eclipse of the planet with its own sun relative, relative to us. So when you have an exoplanet in a distant solar system, which passes in front of the star, when we look at the light coming from it, it has this dip. And so that's how we can figure out that there's a planet there. And just with this dip, this shape, we can figure out a lot of things like the size of the planet, its speed, a lot of interesting things. So I'm sure that anyone who came to any public lectures about exoplanets will have gotten that right. Okay, so the orbit of the moon is actually not stable. It doesn't, it's not gonna stay like that forever. It's getting larger. The moon is, get, it's, is uh, going away from us, but it's going away from us very slowly. So it's actually going to take much more than a hundred million years, actually 600 million years is the estimate uh, until we can't see any solar eclipses at all anymore because the moon will be too far away. It won't be able to block the sun. Well, we'll we will have some, Annual eclipses, you could call it, but no total solar eclipse. So in 1715, Edmund Haley predicted the exact path of a solar eclipse over England to four minutes accuracy, which other events is Haley famous for predicting? I think most of you got that too. Very good job. It's a comet, Haley's Comet, very famous one, which comes back every 75 years or so. And uh, Haley used uh, Newton's laws of gravitation, his friend Newton, to predict uh, when this comet would come back. And he also predicted the exact path of an eclipse. In fact, I found this amazing historical archive. Uh, this is what uh, Edmund Haley drew before the eclipse happened. It, the path it would take over England 
you can maybe see the title. It says, um, I think, a description of the passage of, passage of the shadow of the moon over England. So quite an amazing map. Interestingly, it says German Sea here instead of North Sea. But I'm a physicist, not a historian, so I can't tell you more about that. And he was correct, by the way. The eclipse really did take this path. He drew another one after it came, and you can see it's quite close. So that's that's very amazing, I think. And last question. An eclipse happens when three astronomical bodies come into alignment. What is the general term scientists use to describe this alignment? So I tried my best to confuse you once again. Obscuritus is actually Latin for eclipse, but that's not the answer. Syrigi is a made up word. Transit um, refers specifically to our perspective on Earth. Uh, for example, the transit of Mercury or the transit of Venus. Uh, it, it, it is the alignment of three bodies, but it's not the general term. Focus is not the answer. Uh, Aces, not sure how to pronounce that. That's also Latin for line. But the answer is syzygy, this weird word that I learned about yesterday. So that's all. Oh, uh, We'll see if we have a tie break. Um, let's see. So we do actually have a tie, I think. And so I think we've got uh, one extra question um, that we can use as a tiebreaker. Oh, I, I have a, I have a tiebreaker. Okay, so, okay, so uh, who's in, in first place, Carolina? Okay, so as I understand, Jasmine, Tico Bray, and uh, Nicola Vignard are um, in a tie for second place. And congratulations to Robin Edgar for winning the first place. So we'll move on to a tiebreaker, which I've prepared. And so Jasmine, um, Tico Bray, and uh, Nicola, I'm going to ask you a question. I'm going to share my screen once again. You'll answer in the Zoom chat or the YouTube chat. So let me share my screen once again. So it's not going to be easy and it's not Googleable. Okay. Here's the tiebreak question. So on Thursday's eclipse, how long will the moon's umbra spend on Earth in total? So let me let me uh, clarify what I mean here. So here's an animation of thir Thursday's eclipse. So it's going to start in the morning with this zone here, that's the penumbra. Okay, it's not the umbra. And then eventually you'll see this right here, this red circle, that's the umbra of the eclipse on Thursday, right? You see it's gonna start near Montreal. And what I'm asking is how long will it spend on Earth, the umbra? You can see it exiting right here. Okay, so I'm gonna give you a hint, it's less than one day. It's less than 12 hours and it's more than a minute. Okay, I realize it's really difficult. There's basically no way you can guess that. We're gonna go by whoever answers is the closest will win second place. And please answer in this format, hours colon minutes. So for example, four hours and 34 minutes, something like that. So please en enter your Answers in the chat. And um, make sure your Zoom name corresponds to the name you answer, entered in the Google form. So it would be Jasmine, Tycho, Nicola, so that we can figure out who is who. See, do we have any answers yet? Is, is Quinn one of the second place?
Okay, so Quinn has his answer. That's okay. So your answer is six hours and 20 minutes. Uh, so Jasmine and Nicola, you have two minutes un unless you already answered on YouTube. Okay, Jasmine answered. Jasmine answered seven hours and 37 minutes. Okay, okay. And then your answer is five hours, seven minutes. So we have six hours and 20 minutes, five hours and seven minutes, and then seven hours and 37 minutes. Great. So let me share my screen one last time. So on NASA's website, which you weren't allowed to go to to answer this, of course, you can see these super detailed eclipse maps. And they gonna they tell you all the details about which time it appears. Uh, and this is what we're interested in, the contacts of the umbra. So when it first touches the horizon, it's going to be at 9.49.43 universal time. And when it last exits, it's going to be at 11.33.44. Okay, so... I take these two times and then I go into Google, check time between 9.43 and 11.33. And the answer is one hour, 44 minutes, an extremely short time. So if you are hoping to go to Jeanne Mans Park and then try to go under the shadow and just drive at the same speed it goes, forget it, it's not gonna happen. I did see that uh, at some point, some people went into a plane and had to travel at Mach 2 um, in order to stay in the in the um, moon's umbra. So the answer is one hour, 44 minutes, which, which I think is smaller than everyone's answer. And then who is closest? I believe it is Nicola Vianeri. Congratulations for second place. And I hope you learned something in this trivia and I hope you're ready for Thursday's eclipse. Any, we're, uh, the winners, we're gonna contact you by email uh, to, to organize your prizes. So any parting thoughts, Nick? Uh, no, um, thanks so much to everyone who did the trivia. And uh, if you guys have any more questions at any point, um, you can always contact us on Facebook or whatever, or, or email us and we'll try to make sure that we answer you before the eclipse maybe even like half an hour before the eclipse if you have any last minute questions since you know we'll be awake then preparing for the eclipse so feel free to send us questions up until the last minute and yes robin that's true the speed of the shadow does have to do with the speed of rotation of the earth but it actually depends on every eclipse it always changes and it's in general faster at the poles but there was no way you could have guessed that that that's the point of a tiebreaker anyway uh thank you so much everyone for for coming we hope you enjoy the eclipse on Thursday, be safe and see you next time.